Well, good morning. Welcome to Debbie's Back Porch. So glad to have you with us. Today I'm making something special. Brioche. You know, I've been looking at this brioche recipe for a long time, and it seemed kind of intimidating. So I thought I would make it for you, and we'll demystify it, and oh my, it's the best bread I've ever made. You can pause and write down the ingredients, but I'm going to go over them as we cook. Now let's get cooking. This recipe starts with um, a pre-ferment called a sponge. That just means we're going to mix up part of the dough to get a head start. Now this is one cup of the flour. I've separated it because we use it at different times. Uh, fluff it up a little bit and I've showed you how to measure. You fluff it before you measure. This is two teaspoons instant yeast and you, you can use active dry. I really recommend instant. Then I'm going to add a one third cup warm milk. By warm I mean about 80, 85 degrees. Not like we usually do, not 90 to 110, just above room temperature. And then I have one egg and I'm going to beat that just a little bit. You probably want to know why you don't have to have your milk at 110 degrees. This is a slow rise bread. So we're not trying to hurry it up. We're not actually proofing this dough. So now I'm just going to mix all this together. It mixes pretty easily. We don't, um, we're not going to beat it at this point. We won't beat it until later. So I'm just mixing it, making sure that there are no big lumps in it. You know, there are a couple of different kinds of pre-ferments. There's a biga, there's a poolish. They vary on time and uh, the amount of hydration. Unless you're making up your own recipes, I don't know that it matters because most recipes explain it as they go. But the basic purpose of a pre-ferment is to add flavor um, and texture. So the one you're probably most familiar with is a sourdough starter, which is a pre-ferment. Uh, and I think they usually call that one a biga. So here we go. So it's all mixed together and I'm going to take the other cup of flour and just sprinkle it loosely over the top. And we're going to let this sit and pre-ferment for about 45 minutes, which is kind of a short time for a pre-ferment. But but we'll let this one sit for 45 minutes. You don't have to cover it. I'm going to loosely put this uh, bowl lid on it. And I'll be back in 45 minutes. And after 45 minutes, you see the flowers kind of cracked. We're going to move this to our mixer. And I'm going to really recommend that you use a mixer. Because this has to be kneaded a long time. Like 12 minutes. So I mix that in a little and I'm going to add the rest of my ingredients. We have four eggs. You can beat them a little first if you want to. It doesn't matter. This gets mixed a long time. Uh, and then I'm adding the salt. That is one teaspoon of salt. And then we're going to add our sugar. And that's a third cup of sugar. A little vanilla pure vanilla extract you know if if you're making a, a savory dish with this say you wanted to do garlic and cheese or something you wouldn't add uh, this but this is just plain brioche it's kind of sweet kind of like cake so I'm adding in the vanilla and then I'm gonna put my uh, dough hook in and get this started mixing now I've got another cup and a half of flour that needs to be added. I'm going to add that as this mixes um, half cup at a time. It takes too long for it to blend if you just put all the flour in. And I'm going to have to scrape this down several times in the process. And adding the flour like this will help it help the dough hook pick it up uh, and, and form a dough. I've got this on medium speed. And I'm doing a little time lapse here. I want you to be able to see the process. Because it's a little different than if you were making, say, a loaf of white bread. Or even if you were making dinner rolls. It takes a little longer. The dough never gets really stiff. 
it stays very uh, sticky and loose through the whole process so this will just give you an idea of what to expect we're gonna now turn this on that's all of the flour and on a medium speed we'll let it mix until there's no dry flour left in the bowl you may have to scrape it down a couple times but here we are we've got this all mixed together and now we're gonna let this um, knead let the machine knead it on a medium speed for 12 minutes I set my timer and you're gonna hear when it's ready it's gonna be making a kind of a slapping sound and it'll start to climb up the dough hook and after 12 minutes it's gonna look like this then we're gonna add our butter I have softened butter I didn't microwave it or anything I set it out about two hours before I wanted to use it it still has shape but it's very soft now Julia Child beats hers uh, on the counter and then scrapes it off but this works so this is not quite as messy add it one tablespoon at a time and wait until one is thoroughly beat in before you add the next one and you can stop a couple of times and scrape it down now this is a stick and a half of butter six ounces if yours is not in sticks that's a lot of butter uh, and you'll taste it when you're done so have a little patience with this don't add it too fast and scrape it down when you need to medium speed and as you do this uh, you'll see it form more of a ball it will come together more the only thing I can tell you is just don't be in a hurry this takes a little while and of course that last piece of butter wants to fight with me a little bit so I'll turn it off and scrape it down uh, after you get all the butter in beat it for about let it knead for one or two minutes just enough to make sure that there's no streaks of butter left that aren't incorporated in there you go let's get that one down in there after I've let it beat for a minute I'll be back okay I think we're ready to go here I want you to see this dough this is just the most beautiful creamy golden colored dough it, it's the color of cake batter instead of bread now I've oiled my um, proofing bowl here I just wiped the inside with the butter wrappers uh, and the bottom of the lid too and we're gonna transfer this over and I recommend you have some kind of a scrape you could use a spatula this is so sticky uh, it's kinda like glue but it's gonna be wonderful and I recommend that you fill that bowl full of warm water right away because it'll set up like concrete let me show you the texture here you see how loose and sticky this is don't panic that's the way it's supposed to be now I'm gonna cover this and set this just on my counter not over on the stove not in a particularly warm place just room temperature and this is gonna rise for two and a half hours and you'll see here after two and a half hours it's close to triple in size not like your regular loaf bread it's gonna get much bigger than that and that's okay now we don't see how it shakes we don't want to incorporate very much additional flour into this I'm gonna flour my hands just a little we're not gonna punch this down we're gonna gently deflate it and stretch it out just a little see how sticky it is you need just a little bit of flour um, but not too much and we're just going to pull it away from the sides of the bowl I need a bit more it's very sticky and guard against adding too much flour because you want this to stay a very soft dough uh, and if you add too much flour uh, you you might compromise that and you'll you'll see even when I start to roll it I'm very careful about not adding much flour now I'm just going to pull this a little bit nothing close to kneading I'm gonna stay very gentle I just want to help release some of the gas that's in there uh, before we do our final uh, 
proofing, rising, fermenting, whatever we want to call it. See, I'm just very gently folding it over onto itself. And I hope you can see how shiny and velvety this looks. And it's kind of hard to work with because it is so loose. So what we're going to do now is we're going to refrigerate it and we're going to give it a good long chill. Uh, and it will continue to rise during that chill. So I'm putting mine in the fridge overnight. I make this in the afternoon and chill it overnight and then bake it in the morning before the kitchen gets so hot. And I'll put the lid back on it. And we're going to forget about it until in the morning. And when we come back, it's going to be risen up again to almost fill this bowl. So this is a slow, long rise. And you're really going to be able to tell that in the texture of the bread. And this is what we have the next morning. You don't have to do this overnight. Four to six hours is enough. Basically what you're doing is getting this to the point where you can handle it and cut it without it sticking to everything because it's still sticky. Just now the butter is chilled. Now I've put a, about a tablespoonful, a big tablespoonful of flour over here to the side because I want to control how much flour um, I put in here in, uh, that I incorporate into the dough. So you see I put a little on it and then I pull it all back. That's just to, to sort of help control the stickiness. And I'm going to form this into sort of a square rectangle because I want to cut it in half. This is enough dough for uh, 20 rolls or 16 rolls if you want them a little bit bigger or two regular sized bread loaves or some rolls in a braid or two braids. Anyway, whatever it is you want to do, I'm going to do 10 rolls in a 9 inch cast iron skillet. Uh, you don't have to use a special pan. You might want to buy you, if you like this, you might want to buy you a fluted pan. Uh, but I'm going to do 10 rolls and then I'm going to do a sort of a braid. It's not any particular braid. I'm just going to braid something up. And this dough now is nice and chilled and we want to work pretty quickly. Just a tiny bit of flour on our pad. And I'll form this into a rectangle and make 10 rolls. The size of the rolls is up to you. If you want to do eight rolls and have them a little bit bigger or six rolls and let them be hamburger buns, however you want to do it. But this is pretty easy to shape at this point after it's thoroughly chilled. And what I'm going to do is cut this down the middle and then cut each side into five pieces and that'll give me 10. You could weigh this. I'm not going to. Um, but if, if you want them absolutely uniform, you should weigh them. I'm going to eyeball it. And you know I'm, I'm not really great at eyeballing, but um, I, I don't care if they're absolutely exact. So I'm, I've cut them here and I've got a little bit bigger there on this end. So I'm going to break little pieces off and kind of even them up. And it might have been quicker to weigh them. I don't know. Anyway, so we're going to even these up as much as we can. And then I'm going to show you how I form them into balls. So I'm still being very careful not to have too much flour. I might put just a pinch in my rolling area at a time. As I say, this is still kind of sticky. And you, you want to leave it a little bit sticky. So I just make a ball and... If I see any seams in it, I kind of pinch it and roll it around very loosely. You are not only shaping, you are forming surface tension, which helps your browning, by the way. I'll show you one with my left hand here so that you can see it's very, I'm very, very gently rolling it. And I pinched it, so let me roll it some more. I'm not going to roll all these out for you. I'll do a couple just to let you kind of watch the technique. And I'm going to do this one with my left hand because it's got a better camera angle. And you can see I'm not bearing down at all. 
I'm just going around and around. Not much flour. If you put too much flour, it won't work. I just put a pinch of flour on the board. And there you go. And I'm going to use this other half. And I think I didn't mention to you to keep the other half covered. I put the lid back on the bowl just so it doesn't start to form a crust. And I'll make a little braid. I'm not going to show you the whole because I didn't do it very well. Um, and you don't want to follow that technique. So now I have an egg wash, which is an egg and a tablespoonful of water beat, beaten up. And I'm going to carefully uh, put an egg wash on all of it. And be careful not to get egg wash on your pan. It just kind of messes up your pretty crust. You know, people tell me brioche hamburger buns are all the rage now. I've never had them, but I would think you would cut this into six instead of ten to get a hamburger bun. So this recipe would make a dozen hamburger buns. So I'm wiping away a little egg wash that dripped down in there. I have, I am preheating my oven to 375 degrees. Now, I have varied from Julia Child's recipe just a little bit here, but I've, I've seen other people do it this way, and I like the results better. I egg washed it before the final rise. Uh, it keeps it from drying out quite so much. I've egg washed it before the final rise, and I'm not going to cover it for the final rise. And I am not going to cut across in these buns. I want them to stay as they are. I just thought I should note that variation. Uh... I will let these proof for about an hour until they're almost double. I'll be back. And it's been about an hour. See, they're nice and puffy and they're touching so that when they bake, they're going to push up. Let's bake them now. 30 minutes at 375 gives us this beautiful results. It's been 30 minutes. I'm going to check the temperature. You want to cook these to 200 degrees internal temperature. If you don't, they're going to be sticky, and we don't want them to be sticky. We'll make sticky buns some other day. And this is going up to 200 degrees. These are done. I think these rolls are beautiful. And I'm, I'm looking at my braid thinking I should have put more egg wash in the middle, but it's still going to be wonderful. So we're going to let these sit for just about two minutes in the pan before turning them out, just to make sure they don't stick. And these are just... Oh, look, they just pull apart, and I want you to look at this texture. It, it, it's like a cross between a roll and a cake, and you know, I should have let them cool to room temperature. <clears throat> Be sure your rolls cool to room temperature, but I didn't, and I'm going to taste it. Um, you could do these with butter, but they're full of butter, so I'm going to try a little jelly, and this is my breakfast. Mm, you know, this is almost like eating cotton candy. It's nowhere near that sweet, but it just sort of melts in your mouth and disappears like cotton candy. And they held this texture, by the way. Uh, and the next day, they were still this soft. So don't let this intimidate you. You can see this takes a little time and a little care, but it's not hard. Try it once. And you're going to cook it over and over and over again because your family's going to love it. Thank you for joining us on Debbie's Back Porch. Hope to see you again tomorrow.